The misplaced priorities of governments, that is the topic of tonight's byline. Look, never mind telling the government to get off my lawn. I literally have to tell them now to get out of my bedroom. Yep, despite emails, letters, phone calls from thousands of Canadians asking them not to go through with the light bulb ban, the Harper government, Canada's strong, stable, conservative majority government, went through with banning the 100 watt and 75 watt light bulbs on January 1st. Why did they do it? Best I can tell, it was to make friendly with the green groups. Now, one of the biggest mistakes a politician or political party can make is thinking that by pleasing their enemies, they'll score some kind of points from them. It simply doesn't work. As Kate McMillan, who runs the blog Small Dead Animals, is fond of saying, pleasing your enemies does not turn them into friends. Enemies are enemies, and quite often by trying to cozy up to people who hate you and will never vote for you, the end result is you will alienate your core supporters. Which brings me to the Conservative government's decision to follow through on their ill-thought-out, long-promised light bulb ban, the, the one that no one asked for. So the 75 and 100 watt bulbs are no more. What's left on store shelves is all that there is. As of next January 1st, the same will happen to the 40 and 60 watt incandescent light bulbs. Consumers will be left with the much more expensive halogens, LEDs, or the most common replacement, the toxic compact fluorescent bulbs. Now, the promise to ban the bulbs was made in 2007 with the claim from the government that it was moving to address climate change. The Conservatives has hoped to soften their image by pleasing green groups that were attacking them relentlessly. It didn't work. The green groups continue to attack the government relentlessly, and they'll do so even if every single one of their demands is met. They simply want Harper out. So politically, the Conservatives get no benefit from making this move. The Green activists, who would normally applaud any move on climate change, deride the light bulb ban as not doing anything for the environment. And base Conservative voters are annoyed at the government telling them how to light their homes. Pierre Trudeau famously said that the state has no business in the bedrooms of the nations, but Stephen Harper's conservatives, they've decided to come on in and set the mood lighting for our boudoirs. It's been funny watching the conservatives turn themselves into pretzels to defend this government intrusion into the daily lives of citizens. Well, Natural Resources Minister Joe Oliver, he's been responding to complaints from concerned Canadians by telling them, don't worry, this will save you money. Here's part of the email he sent to several members of the show's audience. Our government is determined to find cost-effective and innovative ways to help Canadian consumers save money through energy efficiency. What a load of poppycock. Rubbish and pure BS. First off, this was never about saving consumers money. That's the new talking point. Secondly, it's not your job to make sure I spend money by banning a tried and true and safe product while promoting a less safe alternative. Anyone pushing this should be embarrassed to call themselves a conservative. Not all conservatives are on board, though. More than one MP has told me that this is an issue that has driven plenty of phone calls and emails to their offices from Canadians upset at the light bulb ban. Now one. One conservative backbencher is stepping up to do something about it. Cheryl Gallant, the longtime MP for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke, she's launched a campaign and petition drive to convince her own government to turn things around. Contacted by politicians or contacted by constituents, she just decided in mid-December she needed to do something. So Gallant launched StopTheLightBulbBan.ca. The website aims to use social media to let more Canadians know about the ban and allows them to contact the politicians in charge of the file. Natural Resources Minister Joe Oliver, uh, Environment Minister, Minister Leona Glukak, and Health Minister Rana Ambrose. Now hopefully these ministers will listen to the Canadians across the country who reject the idea that a totally safe product such as the incandescent bulb should be regulated out of existence for no good reason. Not only are the replacements extremely costly, the most common replacement, the CFL bulb, contains mercury. And there's elaborate requirements for cleanup and disposal. The bulbs can't be thrown in the trash, and if one happens to break, you actually need to evacuate the room, let it air out for 15 minutes, and then clean it up without using a vacuum or broom, both of which the health officials say will just spread the mercury through your house. So the Conservatives have gained nothing from the ban. But as they look to the 2015 election, they could gain plenty by admitting they made a mistake and reversing course. That would put them offside the green activists, but it would put them squarely on the side of average, hardworking, middle-class Canadians. You can do your part. You can go to stopthelightbulbban.ca. 
co-signed Cheryl's letter. This is a conservative MP standing up against her own government on your behalf. She deserves your support on this. So co-sign the letter and then share the website on social media, whether that's Facebook, Twitter, Google+, email, whatever you need to do. We may not win this fight, but we must fight. And that's the byline. In 2014, Canada will start to slowly phase out incandescent light bulbs for more efficient options like halogen bulbs, CFLs, and LEDs. This small change is a big step toward protecting our environment and cutting our energy spending. Here's to a brighter future, Canada. Yeah, something tells me GE might be making more money out of this, outsourcing light bulb manufacturing to China for the uh, compact fluorescence and charging us a heck of a lot more. Lauren Gunter joins me now from Edmonton in a brightly lit room. Uh, Lauren, your thoughts on, on this, the, the government making a move that upsets its core to please people that hate them anyway. And, and upsets ordinary people. I mean, these, this is one of those things that, that a, a political tutor of mine early in, in my involvement in politics and journalism called a pocketbook issue. This is exactly what governments need to avoid because it goes directly to people's pocketbooks and ordinary people, whether it's the conservative base or not, understand that this is annoying and they don't see any point to it. So suddenly you're making people pay more for something that they don't understand Look, the causes for. So it, it, this is really a dumb political move. And as you said in, in the byline, it, it's, a, it's an environmentally neutral move at best. When, uh, when I've been speaking to ordinary people about this, I've heard from liberals, new Democrats, who, or people that lean that way or vote that way, that are annoyed with the ban. And yet, when I'm out there talking about this online, or uh, promoting the column about this on the weekend, I've got liberal partisan uh, you know, policy pushers pushing back and defending the Harper government. Meanwhile, their supporters as well are saying, oh, hold on a minute, I, I don't really like this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and this is this is where the, the global warming theory is finally starting to hit the pavement, put the rubber on the road, as we used to say, uh, because it's a you know the, the the beauty of the global warming theory is it was only a theory, and it was only visible if you had supercomputer models. Now these are some of the ways that that uh, it, it's starting to affect ordinary people. I mean, I can't stand CFL light. I mean, I don't mind halogen. I don't mind LEDs. We, you know, we redid a room in our house a couple of years ago, and we put LEDs in. But they're very expensive. Granted, they'll last 15 years, but they're $40 a bulb. And wow. So, you know, they're really, really expensive. You get a mass market bill, eventually the price will come down a bit, but it's never going to be 69 cents a bulb the way an or incandescent Or for 99 I just bought another batch yeah. of uh, 100 watts over the Christmas break. 99 cents for four of them. That, you can't compete with that. I talked to the, uh, the, the environment department spokesperson, and, and a couple of things come up. Now, first of all, the regulation is so convoluted and so complex that you're not actually going to see incandescent bulbs disappear. Uh, incandescent bulbs made uh, from late 2012 on uh, meet the environmental standard. Well, they don't actually meet the environmental standard, but they don't break the new standard, so they're allowed to be sold. So I think you're going to see an awful lot of manufacturers bring newer bulbs in. Maybe the older bulbs will go to the American market where the, there isn't a ban like this one. Uh, you know, it, it, it's ridiculous. Well, the bans are similar. Look, I want to ask you about this. You mentioned the global warming aspect earlier. Uh, we were sold this as being a let's reduce CO2 emissions because these bulbs, the old ones, use more energy. And so we've got to get rid of them to reduce CO2. Most of Canada's electrical supply is either nuclear or uh, hydroelectric, which both of which are CO2 neutral. They, they're not putting out greenhouse gases. And the biggest coal plant in the country in Anacoke was just shut down. Yeah, so and, where's the savings you know, in terms of CO2? Yeah, but beyond that, I think you have to go even further back in that argument, and that is that global warming isn't happening. Uh, climate change isn't out of order. I mean, it's always, climate's always changing, and it's changing now no faster, no more severely than it ever has in the past. The, the, the big driver of climate on the planet is, surprise, surprise, the sun. 
and the sun is entering a very weak phase, probably will last 20 or 30 years. We're seeing evidence of that right today with the temperatures all across North America and, and Europe, all in the northern hemisphere. It's as cold as it's been in many places in 70 to 100 years. The reason is that the sun is dimming slightly. It doesn't have to dim a lot, but it dims a little bit and it causes the, the planet to cool. This is this is an overwrought reaction to an overwrought theory from overwrought minds of people who love the idea of handing more government control to more bureaucrats to, to dictate ordinary people's lives. And this, um, this is one of those instances where it's so clear what's going on that ordinary people will grasp it immediately. And I think the government's got to back away from this if it wants to stay anywhere in, in, the, you know, in the top three. Hopefully they do. Uh, you hit the nail on the head with the one word there, control. We'll put it to the audience, see what they say. Lauren, thanks so much. You bet, Brian.